Hi folks, day two of the workshop project and well yesterday we made a load of mess, today we're going to make a load more. This is the rough frame that we are working to and I'm essentially just trying to plane all these timbers up so we can start on all that joinery. So if you caught yesterday's video you'll know that we managed to get all of these 12 posts planed up. I've been working out that I probably only need nine uh, because I might use those slightly narrower posts now uh, for the studs either side of the windows. Um, we've also planed up our long beams that are going the length of the building or are these the, no, they're the, the short side of the building, five meters. Uh, but what I really need is the sills because that's going to be where I'm going to be starting with our first mortises. So let's get this planed up. I'm actually trying to work out exactly what these timbers are. I ordered these back in March, of course, last year, didn't quite go to plan. Anyway, I'm, I would have changed the design slightly if I was doing it again, but I'm gonna stick to my guns and just go with what we've got. Now these, I've just remembered, are actually all of our braces. They need to be like a meter long, uh, but the sawmill just sent them as full length. proving a real struggle. It's been raining all night and the plane it does clog up fairly easily with wet timber as you'd expect. And you can hook up the, the extractor and that works pretty well but it's a bit of a faff and the hose gets tangled. Anyway, this is where we are now. I've got the two five meter beams, the two five meter sills. So this is essentially the, the north and the south side of the building that run perpendicular to what you're looking at now. And then I've got four six metre uh, lengths. I need to pick the two best ones for our sill that will run the length of the building, east and west. And then the other two are gonna get carved up into our braces. that these two uh, here are straighter so I'm going to keep those for our sills that means that this one and the other one are the ones that will chop I'm going to cut them at 850 I think that'll give me enough meat either end to cut my tenons from so these will become our braces uh, I'm just going to measure up to make sure I get the most out of these lengths so we don't end up with some annoying wastage <laughs> you how we got on with those sections so these are the braces i really don't know how i how many i need I, I originally just accounted for a pair on each corner so that's eight i might just do an extra couple here more for aesthetics than anything they are ready for indoor joinery and much more manageable but let's crack on whilst the weather's good and get our four five four five remaining pieces planed up
Now this extractor works really well, and yes, I should probably bring that big drum and the cyclone out, but it does fill up very, very quickly. But I'm definitely wishing I'd started using this earlier on today because I was unpicking and jamming that plane all the time. And this is just much cleaner and it's actually leaving a much smoother finish. Right, it's a bigger crown that way, so I'm gonna stick with what I had. This will become our face for facing out. Cladding will go on that. No, sorry, this is the east wall. Shouldn't have drawn anything, should I? So that is the crown. So that will become the top of the beam. This relatively straight edge will become the face. I don't know the symbols, but we'll go for a fish and we'll reference everything off this outside face. As far as timber framing goes, that's a pretty straight beam. Day two has gone okay so far. Um, nearly everything, apart from our big ridge beam, everything has been planed with the electric planer. Because that's got a really long bed, it means that you miss out on these hollows. I say hollows, they're only about a millimetre below the rest or two mil. Um, but because it's so wide, you'd have to do several passes. You'd reduce the whole timber down just to get to these. So because we don't need perfectly square timbers or perfectly uniform timbers because it's timber framing, uh, these ones I can just come in, all I'm worried about is the appearance as such, so any of these sawmill marks I can just come in and take those out and then we've got a consistent smooth finish along the whole thing. You could keep going and keep going and sand it in all sorts uh, but I think I'm happy with this sort of planed finish and then we can put a little chamfer on it with the uh, router just before we uh, raise it. And apologies for any of the wind noise, it's been a wee bit blustery today but we've got it done. Sawdust has migrated a little bit over the lawn, but not too much, and the girls have been ferrying it down. The other thing I've had to use the hand plane for, which you might have spotted yesterday, is this is a 180 millimeter um, cutting width with the knives on that planer. And now these beams, I ordered them as 175 or seven inch, but because they're a rough saw and they've oversized them a little bit, which is great because it means by the time I take a couple of millimeters off each side, we're down closer to a seven inch beam. But because we're a 180 knife on the, or triple blades on there, we end up with a couple of millimetre little ridge on the edge. So I just need to skim over to remove that with a hand plane. And it really is all completely optional this because you can obviously frame really rough or even logs. So there's no need for it to be smooth. We're just making it pretty. You saw me mark up a few of the beams earlier on. What we really need to do now is start labeling these up so I know exactly where they're going, even throughout the layout phase, so I'm not shifting things 10 times and doing myself a mischief. We've got this is gonna be our west beam. Uh, so it's a very simple construction, this frame. We're gonna use these seven by sevens for all of our posts and our beam along the top and the bottom just to reduce timber, because it would be unnecessary. I'm just gonna use a seven by four, so the sill will be a little bit less. And because I'm using an insulated panel system on the outside, I want that to be fairly straight as well, because otherwise any deviation will telegraph through to our cladding. I'm gonna make this the outside, which will become like our reference face, because we want all of the outside of the posts and the beams to be flush for the panels to sit on. So we'll um, make that the outside and then this will become the top so we can make sure that that's kind of half decent so that in appearance inside it's going to be nice a little bit of variation between the heartwood and the sapwood and you know pinkies and whiteies and gray i'm pretty sure it will mellow out it's very wet wood at the moment everything's arriving on pallets lately for the roof and and all that stuff it's just pallets everywhere and the ones that need to be reused because they're those blue or red ones never get picked up in most places the most of the pallet couriers so they can't take them back and you can't really 
sternum and oh, just the pain. I got treated like a criminal for taking two partial pallets I'd broken down to the recycling centre. How many pallets have you got in your boot, sir? And these Belfast sinks just follow me around. The story behind those, I'll stick a link or the card up here to that video. Believe it or not, I found them under our driveway. I think it must go back to my days cleaning kitchens as a chef into the early hours every night. But nothing worse than a bad broom. I found this one. I think it was tool station or screw fix. And it's an absolute beast. Made in Britain, all hardwood. And I can't remember how much it was, probably far too much for a broom, but I knew my woolly hat was somewhere. I have quite a collection of woolly hats now. Boldness will do that to a man. Right, I think the answer is that we need to do a bit of a switcheroo. We need to find the sill that we want to use on this west wall, launch that over the top, send the one that we don't need over there, and somehow free up a sawhorse. In the true spirit of make it up as I go along, what I'm actually going to do is start with our sills and I'm going to work on both the east and the west sills at the same time so I can run the mortar along, along, change the setting, along, along. I think that's probably okay rather than working on one at a time and then I can do the cleanup on them one at a time. Well I told you it might be more of the same as what we had yesterday and I'm afraid that's kind of what it was but at least we're at a point now where we can clearly move on to the next stage. If it's an absolute washout tomorrow then I will switch to doing the braces because I can manage those in the workshop. Um, otherwise we'll grab the chain mortiser out the cellar, bring it up and we'll start hogging out all these mortises and there's an awful lot of them. A lot of this project is going to just be cut, repeat, cut, repeat and um, hopefully it'll all slot together um, and hopefully it won't become tedious to watch. In tomorrow's video I will hopefully get around to giving you a bit more of a, an idea of the design and the layout of the building. Uh, it's a fairly simple design like I might have said um, but it's always handy to give you guys an overview of what I'm actually building before it goes up. Partially because I'm making it up as I go along and uh, it's always good to, for people to chime in and give their opinion on things so there's always room for change at least there will be for a week or two and that's another benefit of doing some more regular videos so that we can um, we can tweak things as we go one thing that all the timber framing videos seem to uh, generate is a lot of interesting tools which is no bad thing um, so rather than answering comments and emails all the time which I don't mind doing, but it's easy to have it all in one place. We'll try and generate an up-to-date tool list of everything I'm using on this project. And I'll get Joe to check all those links because uh, I know that she was going through them yesterday and some of them had expired. It will be a mixture of, a bunch of it will be available on Amazon and we'll try and use an affiliate link because that's what helps keep this channel going. As does people like the kind folk over on Patreon. People like TF Tools who um, do a lot of really specialist timber framing tools. Uh, a lot of their stuff they make themselves because you can't just buy it and likewise there are other tools like this triton which i bought from yandles i'll link to their stuff because they always stock uh triton gear and also replacement blades and things like that uh and you might be able to get them there far easier than anywhere else and you might also notice a whole bunch of render showed up the other day um i've just opted to go for a weber sort of monocouche on the back wall of this garage. Um, I was just overthinking it and I'm certainly not gonna do it in stonework. So we might take a pause from the timber framing as soon as we get a nice-ish day and we'll get that slapped up on the wall. He says slapped up like he does it every day. Never even touched the stuff. But then again, I'd never been on a roof before. I took the roof off our house a few months back and uh, that turned out all right. I'm going to go make some plans, get yesterday's video all edited up and ready for you guys and get the debrief on how homeschooling went. I'm kind of thinking that I got the better deal out of the two options here. 
So uh, thank you, Joe. All right, any thoughts on today's video, do stick them down below. It'd be great to hear your feedback, but thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. How long is that gonna last? Daily uploads. What's a nutter?